Good morning. I'm Steve Scott, and I'm the Community Care Administrator from the Queen Anne's County Area Agency on Aging. I would like to welcome you to the 2020 Maryland Access Point Caregivers Conference. I extend a welcome from our director, Kathy Willis, as well. Let's first mention that we all recognize the time we are in, and due to the safety of our staff and presenters, and to maintain social distancing in this studio, we will be wearing masks throughout the event. I would like to introduce you to who you will see in the studio today. We have Renee Carter, who is our MAP coordinator, and we thank her for thinking creative, creatively and working hard to ensure this conference still happened. We also have Bruce Groves from QAC TV and behind the cameras, Ted McNeil and Chris Bartlett. We want to thank Queen Anne's County Television for hosting this event today and for helping get it up on Facebook Live, QAC TV channels, and Zoom. So what is MAP? MAP is based on a national model of an ADRC, which is an Adult Disability Resource Center. It's designed as a one-stop shop so that individuals 18 and over with a disability or 60 and over as a senior can go to one place to get services and help they need and not have to go to lots of different places throughout their town or jurisdiction. So MAP is housed Queen Anne's County Area Agency on Aging, which has four divisions, administration, senior centers, county-wide public transit system, and community care. Specifically, our group, Community Care, is here to assist with a number of programs related to Medicare assistance and Medicare counseling, long-term care planning and supports, caregiver support, home-delivered meals, application and information, and referrals to other programs and agencies. I want to mention that we are funded by grantors. At their federal level, it is the Association of Community Living, offering funding under the Older Americans Act. And the Maryland Department of Aging provides funding at the state level. We want to thank both of them for their support to our agency and programs. We hope people are logged on and joining us from outside of Queen Anne's County. And if so, we want you to know that in every jurisdiction across the United States, there is an area agency on aging there to serve you as well, doing the same things we do here. So please reach out to them as well, and they can help in any way you might, you might need. I want to share a quote from Mr. Rogers. Not Kenny Rogers, but Mr. Rogers, our American icon. He said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. So I want to close by saying that our agency, our MAP program, we are the helpers. Our staff who are here in the studio, Renee, and on Zoom, Pat Hodges, Amy Mullins, Jennifer Hall, and Chantel Murray, and out in the field, Jean Jeter and Missy Bennett, they are your helpers. I want you to know that we are still open. We have people in our building every day, and we are also virtual and here to serve you in any way we can. This is a difficult time, so please take the time to take care of yourself and allow us to use our helping skills to assist you as well. And believe me, you reaching out to us helps us just as much as it may help you. Again, thanks to all our presenters, Queen Anne's County TV, all of our aging staff, and welcome. Have fun. So thank you everyone for joining us. We also have a thank you from uh, Trisha on Facebook. So just a reminder that you can comment on Facebook if you have any questions. And please comment on Zoom if you have any questions. And we'll make sure to get us out to the people. But Renee, we have plenty of people here to join us, right? Yes, we do. We are very excited. And again, we want to thank everyone for taking your time out today to join us. We know that your time is very important. And uh, the fact that you took a, t a minute, just a minute, to spend time with us, we are truly, truly grateful. So today we have Andrew Hughes. Andrew is the coordinator with the Mobile Integrated Community Health. We call that MIC. MIC is under the health department. They do absolutely wonderful things here in our county. And we're gonna let Andrew tell us how to stay safe at home. Andrew? Hi, Renee. Hi, thank you guys. Steve, thank you as well for uh, having me here today to talk about a couple things. Again, my name's Andrew. I'm a paramedic with the Emergency Services Division here in Queen Anne's County and also a, uh, a coordinator, excuse me, for the Mobile Integrated Community Health Program. And I'll just spend a quick moment explaining what that is. It's an integrated program with both the Department of Health here in Queen Anne's County and the Career Emergency Services Division. So that's Queen Anne's County Department of Emergency Services. And what we do is it's a cost-free program. It's provided by the county. We send a nurse and a paramedic out to your home. Uh, based, basically, once you're referred by either the paramedics or area hospitals in our region. And 
we try to pair you up with resources. We try to get you the help that you need to keep you happy and healthy within your home. There's a lot of things that we do, which if you're interested, we can you know, talk about that program later on or I can give you a number to call and we can explain exactly what we do. But basically in a, in a nutshell, for lack of better terms, we wanna get the right resources to the patient to uh, keep, them, keep them going, keep them happy and healthy in their home, keep them from having to go to the hospital all the time and getting them the care that they need. Um, what I'm gonna talk about today is a couple points. We're gonna talk about fall prevention, oxygen safety, fire safety, access to help, and then we'll end with a couple tips on daily conditioning. Um, so starting off with, one of the things that we see as, as paramedics in our, our MIC program is um, we see a lot of falls, okay? Falls happen a couple different ways. We see them in the bedroom, we see them in the kitchen, in the hallway, in the bathroom specifically. One of the big things that we see is, is cluttered hallways, people not having a clear space to walk through. Um, Keep that, keep that space clear. Always give yourself an in and an out throughout your home. Anytime you gotta climb over something or kick something out of the way, it's, it's gonna be a problem. Um, one of the other biggest things that we see are rugs and throw rugs. Um, we all love decorations in our house, I, I get it. However, rugs are not exactly our friends when it comes to trying to navigate throughout our home. Um, so if you have a, if you have a, a basically a, a rug that skids too easily across your floor, hardwood, tile, whatever the case may be, it, it could become a tripping hazard for you. Um, so the things that we recommend, if you gotta have those rugs, obviously we, we wanna say get rid of them, but I, I get it, you might like it, but um, if you absolutely have to have it, there's a couple things you can look at, all right? You can get the you know, a textured surface, a rubber surface, mount it beneath your rug, okay? Put it on your floor, it'll keep it, give it some traction, it'll keep it from sliding. The other thing you can look at as well, all right, is get a rug that already has that rubber texturized bottom that's not going to slip on you when you hit it. All right, you try to get up out of bed, you've got hardwood floor in your, in your, um, in your bedroom, and you slip right there. I mean, these things can help you. Um, there's a couple other ideas online. I'm sure you can find some things, but these are just two very basic options to put beneath your rugs to keep you from sliding all the time. Um, talked about some clear pathways. The other thing we see a lot, excuse me, as a bunch of stuff here, but one of the other things we see a lot is extension cords. Your phone charger doesn't reach the outlet on the wall. That lampshade's not close enough to your end table, whatever the case may be. Extension cords are great, except the fact that they pose a great tripping hazard, especially when maybe they're not long enough and they're suspended and they're a few inches off the ground and you have to step over top of it. That's gonna be a serious problem. Uh, for anybody, regardless of your age, regardless of any mobility concerns. Um, obviously, that increase of risk goes up uh, if you do have some mobility issues. Um, so be mindful of where your extension cords are, where you're mounting them. Maybe just try to reduce them in general. Because um, I tell you, between um, rugs, mats, and extension cords are some of the, the most um, prevalent things that we're seeing that are causing these falls. Um, Going back to clear pathways, especially at night, a lot of people get up, they go to use the bathroom, whatever the case may be. Night lights might sound a, you know, not, not a big deal, but it, it, it actually can help. If you've got a long hallway, it gives you some, some visibility to help see where you're going. Um, into the bathroom, let's move into that here. Grab bars, bath mats, these are all things. I'm not here to recommend a particular device. This is just something that we carry on one of our units. So if, if we come out to your home and we're, we're saying, hey, there's, there's definitely a, uh, an issue while you're falling. It seems to be in your bathroom, whether you're getting out of the shower, the, the toilet, whatever the case may be. Um, we have some grab bars that we can supply, um, but th these are things you can also look at online. You know, Amazon, um, at Walmart, any, anywhere, whatever your, your choice is, they have a couple options or you can get a contract to come out, put commercial devices in. This device here is just, a, it's just one option that we carry, but it's a suction cup mounting device and basically it'll adhere to a tile or a fiberglass wall and it's pretty sturdy for being a suction cup. A lot of you might not be a fan of it, but it'll hold. Um, we put a couple of these in sometimes, uh, but that's a great resource to have. Maybe a few in your bathroom, in the shower, by the, uh, by the vanity, by the toilet. The other thing I recommend also is in the shower, your bath mats. I probably feel like most people have this. It's kind of common sense thing, but it's something that's almost overlooked a lot of times. So bath mats are a great tool to have as well. And the other thing I want to talk about lastly with fall risks is our patients on oxygen. Um, we all know um, how long these tubings and cannulas can be. All right, and as you can see here, how long and twisted this is. Sometimes it's long enough to, to navigate the whole house. 
um, that can be a problem. You can get tied up, and if you have any dogs or cats, they can get tied in it, make a knot. Next thing you know, you've got, a, you've got it wrapped around your foot and your leg. You just have to be conscious of where that oxygen line and tubing is um, and, and where it's running, because these things can absolutely um, definitely have you falling a lot more than, uh, than obviously without it, for lack of better terms. Um, I think that covers most of my stuff on fall prevention. If you guys have any questions, I think there'll be a period at the end. So feel free to ask um, Bruce anything. Uh, the other thing I wanna dive into is some oxygen safety. For those of which, again, that are on oxygen, a um, couple different cylinders. You may have some bigger ones, may have some small ones. This is a portable one here. Regardless, oxygen is a very flammable and combustible oxygen. Um, it's not air. So please refrain from smoking, keep it away from any heating sources. I, I know some people do smoke while on oxygen. It's something you definitely want to take that oxygen off, of, take that cannula off of your face, turn your oxygen off, maybe even go outside your residence if need be. Um, it, this, is, this is something we, we don't, you don't hear about in the news a whole lot, but it can happen about it becoming flammable um, and, and exploding um, when uh, introduced to uh, open flame. Um, the other thing, because of that, you're going to want to keep it away from heating sources, maybe preferably keep it in a corner, keep it out of the, there. It's also a tripping hazard in itself if you don't have a concentrator or a, a rack for it. Um, you know, when these things fall over, you know, they, they do have the ability to um, explode, explode, excuse me, for um, depending what kind of floor that they hit. So you want to be very cautious with how you're securing this and where it's at in your home. Um, we'll touch a little bit on fire safety, these smoke detectors that we have here. Um, again, we're not recommending any particular brand. It's just something that we stock. Um, it's a tamper-proof sealed lithium powered smoke detector. They're good for 10 years. Uh, pretty much anywhere you go now, whether it's online or if it's in store, most, um, smoke detectors are going to be of that caliber. Um, I recommend if, if you have a dire need that you need a smoke detector and you're not able to to find the means to get one yourself right now, reach out to your local fire departments, contact them. They all have programs where they can help with um, getting smoke detectors out to our citizens. And when we come out with our mobile integrated health division, one of the things we evaluate is, are your smoke detectors working? Do you need additional ones installed? And if so, we can do that there. Um, that's one of the services we provide. Um, just to mention, I believe the law changed back in 2013 about where they are and where they should be. Um, basically, any home built after 2013, the, uh, the standard is one device per sleeping room, so per bedroom. Um, and then also, I believe, one per uh, story if you have a two-story residence. We also recommend having one in the kitchen. A lot of homes we see don't have smoke detectors in their kitchens, and that's definitely a place where a lot of things can go wrong. So definitely try to, if you have the means to get a couple smoke detectors, have one in your kitchen as well. Um, other fire safety things. Blankets. I know I do not have a very colorful blanket with me today. However, we all love blankets. They keep us warm, especially rolling into these winter months. Things that are bad for these, your space heaters, um, your oil heaters, um, anything that's warm or hot, you're going to want to keep this away from. Too many times, you know, I'll go into a patient's home and I'll see this draped over top of some sort of heating device or the, or the end of it is maybe near a baseboard heater. Um, and that's just a, that's a huge, huge um, fire safety risk right there. So by all means, store them in a, an appropriate safe place. Be cautious when you're using them, where you're using them. And the other thing, too, is if you are using some space heaters, be cautious of where you're plugging those into. You want to put them into your direct outlets, not into extension cords. You may find thicker gauge extension cords, and that's your decision, but a lot of your home smaller device extension cords are not strong enough to support those space heaters. Um, and a lot of times those devices can catch fire, can melt, and cause a lot of problems. So that is a... That's definitely a big thing that you do not want to do is plugging space heaters into your extension cords. Um, access to help. Just really two things on this. You know, how do you get help? How do you call 911 when you've fallen? Two biggest ways is have a, have a fall alert device. We recommend that for most of our patients that we're seeing. Um, it's not always practical to be able to have your cell phone on you at all times, especially within your home. You want to get away from your cell phone. So you need a few minutes to yourself and you fall and you don't have that ability to call someone. So a fall alert device is absolutely recommended. Check your local pharmacies. Check online. Um, you know, not recommending any sort of 
you know, uh, web search, uh, Amazon or anything like that, but I knew that they do have, I know that they do have options. So um, contact your family, see if they can get you um, some assistance in getting one of those. Again, if we come out with our mobile integrated health team after a referral and we do a visit with some of our patients and there's definitely a justifiable need for a device, we can help coordinate and navigate getting you a, a device. Um, and the last thing that we're gonna talk about today is just a few tips on conditioning. And what I mean by that is just the fact of moving, um, the kinetics, the getting up and giving yourself a goal every day to try to do something physical. When you, when you, become compl when you, when you stay on the surfer, you stay seated, especially with COVID right now, everybody's just kind of hunkering down, staying at home. If you can give yourself a goal to walk throughout the house, a couple circles, walk to the mailbox. Maybe if, if you're able to walk upstairs and downstairs, and I'll be careful with your steps, um, give yourself that goal. Stay mobile. Stay active. Um, I, I know a lot of areas aren't really open right now, so you know we were able to say go out to your senior centers, be involved with your friends out there. That might be a little issue with COVID right now, um, but you know if you're able to take a walk around your community, get out, enjoy the fresh air, but stay active. Staying active is going to keep you moving. Hopefully, keep your body toned in a way to to keep yourself moving every day. Uh, we want to we want to reduce any sort of risk of falling, whether that's, uh, you know, equipment in the home, um, things in the home, grab bars, um, any sort of other safety uh, concerns, and also your, your daily conditioning. Um, if you guys have any questions, I, I think there's uh, the ability to um, post either on Zoom or Facebook. Um, we'll try to answer those questions for you. You can also visit our mobile integrated community health page. I, I know the number is cut off here, but it's 443-262-4506. If you have any questions and uh, that's the direct line to the department of health um but thank you for the time we, we greatly appreciate it Renee. thank you so much andrew that was very informative we really appreciate it and it is important for the caregivers to remember to keep moving we so many times you're focused on the loved one that you're caring for you forget about yourself so those were very very good points and we really appreciate it i Absolutely. never thought about the blanket near the heater you know, so these are things when you uh, go to visit, you can look for those things. We appreciate that, Andrew. Thank Absolutely. you for everything Thank that you. you guys do. Hey, Renee, I have a question. Yeah. Andrew, sir. what do you think is a good way for people themselves to kind of uh, figure out what they need to do in their house? Would it just be going room to room and making a checklist or what's it? Not, not a bad idea, Steve. Um, like you said, room to room, you know, start with the areas that you're, that you're frequenting the most. So bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchens. Um, a lot of people, especially when they have mobility concerns, seem to almost condense where they're living inside their own home. So go through and look at your floor. Look at how you would navigate from bed to bathroom and, and just think about it. Well, how would I get here? How would I get there? And whether it's a mental checklist or write it down, um, you know, th those are things that you can absolutely do on your own, on your own time to you know, aid yourself from falling or, or having any of these concerns. All right, great. Sure. Thanks. Absolutely. A lot of people on Facebook appreciate your presentation just now. Uh, we had uh, Sarah Harrison who uh, wanted to give you a shout out in the QAC MIC team for keeping the elderly and disabled citizens safe. Their dad's doing much better since your last site visit. That's awesome to hear. Uh, Martha Anthony said this presentation was very helpful, a great reminder. Uh, Jane Anthony chimed in saying thank you for this conference in general. And I do want to uh, make sure that we touch base on Trisha, who had commented early on that she would love to touch base with probably everyone in this room because she works in healthcare and wants to know how she can help share these resources with Eastern Shore. So we'll make sure we contact her after this is over. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Martha had a question of, uh, what about any medication, uh, medication tips? Medication tips? Yeah. yeah. Maybe organize is a better word, list of your medications. Um, I know medications and stuff can be very overwhelming, especially in today's times. A lot of people are on a lot of medications. Um, I would say if you're having any difficulty, it, our, our program only takes referrals um, by, the, by the county paramedics, local agencies within the county um, and our area hospitals. But if, if you as a patient are struggling with medications, truthfully struggling, not getting a good explanation of what you're taking and, and just need some help, some tips for organizing, understanding, by all means, please contact that number. If anything, we can try to um, help maybe get someone who can talk to you about that. And if, if over the phone, if we can tell that maybe there's definitely a need 
uh, for a visitation, then that's something we might be able to coordinate. Um, but as far as, you know, pill boxes are great tips for organizing your meds. Um, they have dates, times. Um, contact your local primary care provider. He or she may be able to uh, give you some other tips or some other uh, remedies to your medications. Um, and then I would also recommend, uh, if you do have a lot of them, writing them down in a very organized list uh, to at least have available to the EMTs and the paramedics in the event that you would have to need to call 911 because that gives us a, a very, very close look of what your medications are and kind of gives us a glimpse into your overall health care and what your needs are going to be instead of having to ask you each and every medication. Uh, if you have that available to us, if, if you need to call 911, it's, it's a great resource for us. Great. Thank you. That's all our questions we had over here. I think we're ready to wrap up. We have more thing, more people to talk to, right? We do, we do. So up next, we're going to look at a healthy meal because we all want to know how to put something together really fast as a caregiver, but yet we want to make it also healthy. So we have Cheryl Bush. She's the Family and Consumer Science Agent Associate for the Maryland Extension Office and she's gonna to put together a healthy meal. We hope you enjoy. Yeah, I'm gonna magically uh, transform over there now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're cooking with Cheryl in the kitchen today. Hey, Cheryl. My name is Cheryl Bush, and I'm so happy to be here at the 2020 Virtual Caregivers Conference. So I'm glad that I was invited. I am the newer Family and Consumer Science Educator for Queen Anne's County. So I work with University of Maryland Extension and our programs are all about coming out to the community and uh, showing you new things. So we hope that we're going to make a few really tasty dishes today, Bruce. That's right. This is a cool thing to show all our caregivers and our seniors at home. Easy things and quick things to make, right? Right, because they all already have a lot on their plate. Oh yeah. So um, today's recipes are a frambled green eggs and a one pan spaghetti. So we'll talk about the benefits of each of these, but we'll start with the frambled green eggs if you're ready. So I am always ready. Okay. So <laughs> you're frambled, why is it called frambled? Frambled because they're fried and they're scrambled. So you really can't mess them up. Is that good? Well, I mean, I, yeah, it sounds good, but if you're telling me to do two things at once, I might mess it up. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, they are, they're half fried, half scrambled. Can't mess them up, take only about five minutes to prepare. And I think you're gonna really enjoy the taste because you don't even have to add any extra cheese. So Perfect. Their calories stay low that way. They yeah, stay healthy. Nice. So we're going to really take and work with just um, the ingredients of olive oil and a cup of chopped fresh green beans. You can use frozen, of course, four large eggs, and we're going to have some hearty grain toast to put those eggs on. Um, the equipment is simple, and I did a lot of chopping ahead of time. I hope that was okay. For oh, no, that's today. perfect. I, yeah, I like that pre-made uh, yeah. chopped stuff. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so first I'm going to take and just grab a tablespoon of my olive oil, and I like extra virgin olive oil. It just gives a little bit more of those bitter notes and has that flavor. So we're going to add the tablespoon of olive oil to our pan that's been slightly heated, and then you want to get that up. I'm going to say... Uh, just a medium heat so that this will start to actually saute these green beans. So we're gonna take our green beans, and again, it's just one cup of chopped fresh, and I've tried them with frozen, but my taste testers really like the fresh a little better. And this is so cool because it's a classic breakfast meal, eggs, everyone does eggs, right. but you get your vegetables in too. Right, and that's the whole beauty of it. So we're just gonna let those uh, simmer away there a little bit. It takes about three minutes to really get them a little softened. Really quickly, it's gonna fry, then scramble. <laughs> right, and we were talking, the cool thing about doing these two meals and what we're doing is the cleanup's so simple also. Right. So you're only right. using the one pan. We're using the plates that we're gonna put the toast on. Right. And then you're done. Yeah. So while we're Just watching these vegetables, yep. what's your favorite vegetable? Um, I think I like spinach. And you know, Bruce, the nice part about this recipe is that you can vary it. Like right. people could use spinach or some Swiss chard, mm -hmm. you know, but so much easier. Right, 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 so right. So much right. easier than all that. So. Yeah. So, Bruce, we're gonna go ahead and um, fry four eggs. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna drop them in, and then we're going to scramble those Sure, eggs. now while you're doing okay. that, should I be doing the toast? That would be great. Oh. This is, sure. Because this is kind of a hearty dish. And you just drop in the eggs. You're just letting them fry and simmer more with those the green beans. And then I'm just going to take and start scrambling by pushing that around. So let's see, cannot mess these up. <laughs> 
And it's already smelling good in yeah. here. Yeah. And seasoning is light. Like I say, you're not adding any extra calories with cheeses with this. You're just going to add a little salt and pepper to taste. It's perfect. I'll sit down over here on the table. That'd be great. Okay. Now. So where can people find these uh, recipes? Well, this one is called Chop Chop Family. And as you can see, it really helps to try to get the family involved in uh, creating foods. So just season it according to what you would like. A little bit of salt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do enjoy salt. It okay. gives it a little bit. Look at yes. that. Frambled green Our frambled eggs. Frambled green eggs. Nice, tasty dish. I had so much fun cooking with Cheryl. She was a treat. That was great. And we have another segment coming up soon where we, we made a second meal. So keep watching if you want to learn how to make healthy meals. I'm so used to going out and asking people what their favorite cookie is. Yeah. But we're eating healthy now. And I met with Cheryl. I asked her what her favorite vegetable is. So I'm going to ask you guys, what's your favorite vegetable? Green beans. Yeah. Broccoli. Broccoli. Now, I'll still stick with asparagus. <laughs> and we have someone new in the studio with us. We have Andrea. I'm going to let you introduce her, Renee, All so right. we can work on our next program. Okay, wonderful. Hey there. We have Andrea Boothby Rice. She's the librarian at Centerville Branch here in Queen Anne's County. And Andrea's going to tell us about the Senior Storytime Kits and Book by Mail. So this is exciting because if you love to read or if this is time that you have time to just take a moment, get a good book, this program is what you need. Andrea? Thank you. Yeah, we have two really great programs. Um, our uh, Books by Mail program has been around for quite a while. Um, it's for anybody who is unable to get to the library due to health or other reasons. Um, you could be eligible to receive uh, books and audio material directly to you uh, through the mail from the library. Uh, all you have to do is be a resident of Queen Anne's County and uh, have a library card, but we could always get you registered for one. Um, you can contact either branch of the library to get signed up for the program. And um, all transactions are paid by the library. Um, so when you receive your books through the mail um, and you're finished with them, you put them right back in the bag and send them right back out in the mail. Um, so there's no contact. Um, you don't have to worry about um, delivering them back directly to um, any library. And then we have a pretty much a brand new program. Uh, these are our story time uh, kits. Uh, they're, for, they're geared towards adults with memory loss um, or adults with intellectual disabilities. Um, each kit is themed. It has a variety of activities and books in there. Um, so uh, as you can see here, the one, uh, this is our cat themed one. Um, we have a number of themes. We have dogs and outdoors and handyman and farm um, and a couple more. Um, so there's uh, videos, activity cards in each one. There are uh, sensory items that go with the theme. This one has some, some lovely cat toys, um, which my child thinks is the best thing in the world. Um, a variety of books of different levels, so depending on um, who you're dealing with, uh, you might just want something that has pictures, or you want, might want simple activities like Find the Cat, um, which is a brain game book uh, made for adults with um, Alzheimer's and dementia. dementia. Um, uh, some other book kits have uh, books that have um, short stories or essays. Um, so if you want something a little bit more, um, it's in there. Um, and then we also have one, um, have uh, activities like puzzles and things like that. So there's a lot going on in each of these kits. Um, and to get one of these, um, you can contact the Centerville Library, um, and we will get that to you um, uh, either directly you know, to your house, or if you're in a facility and you want to use it for that, um, that would work as well. Thank you, Andrew. That's all I got, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really fascinating. I, I didn't know anything about this, and that is that will really come in handy. Um, it looks like an exciting backpack. It has a lot of things to do that are fun. Yeah, and I should say that the kits, the Storytime on Wheel kits were made uh, with the intention of having volunteers um, go out into the community and take them uh, as an um, outreach program. But because of the pandemic, we sort of retooled it so that it can go out to individuals. Um, you just have to let us know that you would like one. So okay. is it easy just to make the phone call or go on the Internet to do it? Is that easy? Yeah, you can uh, call um, the other branch of the library, um, or you can email us, uh, info at qaclibrary.org, and we'll um, get you set up with whichever program that you prefer. All right, thanks. 
Yeah, we did have Allison Wood comment. If you're watching along on Facebook, she put the uh, the contact information for the Queens County Library right in the comments. So if you're watching on Facebook, go in there, and there's an easy link to get you all set up. So I see you pick a whole bunch of cat books. Yes, apparently uh, cats are my theme. This is the second cat thing that I've done with QIC TV. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, each one, there's a dog one, too, so if you're not into cats, we've got a dog one. Um, if you're not into cats, so, you're making mistakes. We, uh, yes, that's my, my feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so lots of different types of books, um, and so this way, if you take it out once and you start with one book and you return it, um, there's more to do in it the next time, so you can really come back and reuse these quite a few times. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, thank you so much, and we'll be contacting you you know, as an agency um, to get more information. We get calls all the time. So this is really exciting. Thanks so much, yeah. Andrea. Thank you. So we had some more comments while we were going through oh. about people who wanted to list what their favorite vegetable was. Oh, all right. Good. So we had another broccoli. Yes. And then we had a Brussels sprout. A Brussels okay. sprout. Let me tell you, if you roast Brussels sprouts, <laughs> I'm all about it. They are good. <laughs> but that, that's about where I end on Brussels sprouts. Andrew, before we let you go, favorite vegetable? Oh, squash. So, damn ready. Squash. I was ready for it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Ray, what we got coming up next? Well, I'll tell you what. We've got Cheryl Bush coming back with us. And she's got another healthy meal that you're going to enjoy. It's a one pot meal. Um, so it's easy, it's healthy, and you'll enjoy making it at home. So we'll watch Cheryl fix us a meal. So I got to run back to the kitchen. You got to run back to the kitchen. Okay, here I go. Round two. We enjoyed breakfast. Now maybe time for dinner. That's right. And this one is great, Bruce, because it's a one pan spaghetti. So easy cleanup. And that's the whole focus, right? Is to help you make your day a little bit easier. So, I love easy cleanup. Oh. And before we got started, we cleaned up. So maybe right. food safety, right? That's really important. You know, we can have spills, but they need to be cleaned up for safety for, you know, no trip hazard. But Bruce and I also, of course, washed our hands in between doing this cooking. And anytime that you're working with a raw meat that we're working with today, you also want to wash hands between. We have different kind of like cutting boards, so in preparing for this, you might want to use for chopping fresh vegetables, you know, one color, and then have a separate color always for your different protein foods, your poultry, your fish can even, they can all be separate. My so, wife doesn't trust me, so we got the cutting boards that actually have a picture of meat on them. That works. That works. <laughs> no, no foolproof, right? <laughs> well, the other piece that's so important, and um, in extension, we really promote food safety in all of our programs, is you take temperatures. Mm -hmm. You know, so we do have a food thermometer that we'll take at the very end just to test and see, you know, are we at the right safe food temperature, which for this, because it's a ground beef product, is 160 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go. Okay. So our one, so pan, one pan, pan spaghetti. spaghetti. One pan spaghetti. All right. This is a recipe from the University of Maine Cooperative Extension, their SNAP-Ed program. And it's a 10-minute prep. 30 minutes to cook, you know, fully to make sure that ground beef is cooked. Um, it really yields 10 one cup servings, so it yields a pretty good amount. Um, you can do great substitutions too. If you want to try ground turkey, next thing I'm going to try with some taste testers at home is a frozen shrimp, just baby shrimp. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to use that. Well, I need to invite you over oh, okay. more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the other piece to look at is we are working with just basic thin spaghetti today. And um, instead of the spaghetti, you can also do some alternates. So if you would like to look for a pasta that's a little bit higher in protein, higher in fiber, you can try a delicious chickpea pasta or a corn and rice uh, spaghetti pasta that would be great for gluten free. Right, which is so important because that's right. really coming out a lot more now. A lot yeah. of gluten free you know, yeah. diets and things are necessary. Yeah, and, and so there's all these wonderful options that we have to try. Um, there are also some um, little helpful gadgets here. Uh, we have tomato sauce. I did not know that you can actually use tomato sauce right out of this hermetically sealed um, packaging. So that's easy too because once you pour, it's maybe easier than dealing with the can. Right, we're going to show you world. simple. Right, right. <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> so we're going to start with um, Bruce. Uh, right. If you would go ahead and we have our electric skillet right. set at about 300. 350, so yep. it's nice. And, and it's already heated. We've had that going. That's right. So that's ready to go. You're so let's take the lid off and get the lid. Take the lid and start. Right. Put in some onions in there. Here we go. And, and, going. and you were so kind to chop up the onions for oh, me. Oh, I didn't want to make you cry. So and I, I do cry. For <laughs> but I tell you, for people that do have that problem, mm -hmm. I just wear like blue light glasses. That's great. And it stops it. Sometimes doing it underwater, if it doesn't matter for your oh, recipe, there you, you yeah, can sure. also do that. So 
Here's a spoon here too for you. Wow, oh, perfect, yes, yeah. And we don't want to lose onion. frugal onions. cooks, right? That's, oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Great. Right. And then next is gonna be your fresh ground beef. It All is right. only one half pound. Thank you for cutting it open. Now mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about my hands That's on That's right. All right. Okay. Am I mixing up? Mix it up. Mix it up. Chop it up. Just kind of get those sure. onions blended on in. Because this is a, a very lean beef too, this has a little bit lower calorie content. See if there's anything really. There isn't much to drain off. What I had yeah, set there really up isn't. here. Yeah. <laughs> what I had set up here was that you could set up a strainer and put a piece of paper towel underneath. When you actually pour any grease off of a product, you can actually see how much is coming off of that product then. But Bruce, like you, yeah, you I really good don't meat. see it. So yeah, yeah, I think you we're really good. do good. Right. So what I'm asking next is, with the recipe, you just want to add water. And All right. we're starting with two cups of water, starting out smaller, and we can always add a little bit more. This recipe calls for about three cups of water, three and a half. And next, we have spices. So what I did was just make a blend for you of oregano and rosemary and some garlic powder and I think just a very, very small amount of actually sugar. Sugar brings out that tomato sauce flavor. Wow, yeah. I've, I've never even thought of using yeah, sugar before. It's really before. a neat trick. I think some other things you can use are ground um, coffee, instant coffee, to actually bring out that wow. flavor of the sauce. I'll so, have to try that. All right, yeah. so I'm adding all this So in. you're gonna add that in, and right. that's our flavoring, no salt. Perfect. And you just wanna stir that up, and sure. it'll start getting hot again. Right you know, as it as that water heats up. So our tomato sauce is going next, Bruce. And the one thing with this is, um, this is a 15 ounce can. When you take a regular uh, can opener, there's a lot of twisting action to it that can be a little bit hard on wrists um, as you get older. And so what I brought today is a real handy tool that is not that expensive at a home store. And it takes batteries. And all that you do with this is apply it to the can top, take it and run on its own. And so you just have to hold it, make sure it's steady, and this will open that can for you. Man, can you imagine what our forefathers would think? I know. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that's great about it though is again, you're not twisting, you know, it's making it a little easier and any things that you could do at home to make this a little bit easier of a process for you through the day, that's the key. And that's all it is. So next I'm gonna ask you just to pour that Tomato in. Tomato time. Uh -huh. Got it, thank all you. Right. I am very frugal. You are, that's a great way to be. <laughs> and the last would be two cups of spaghetti. This is just a broken spaghetti. So I chopped it by breaking oh, it oh, in right three. So. And ready to go in now? Yeah, just All right, put that in and then let that get simmering real right. And the water that is in there, the sauce that is in there is actually going to you know, soften and get that right. spaghetti right to al dente, right the way you want it. And after you get it stirred in, you could put the lid on for a little bit like you know, faster so that the cooking can take place and 30 minutes and this product should be done. So mine's cooking now but we don't want to make the people wait forever. Right. So you actually prepared some for us earlier. We have that finished product. And so this is the uh, one pan spaghetti, all finished, ready to eat. Uh, there's well, not quite ready yet, not right? Not yet, because <laughs> we have one more uh, trick that goes with this to make it taste really great. But one thing that we're going to talk about too is um, making sure that your temperatures are right. So when you are um, cooking in the kitchen, it's really great to invest $10 in a uh, stem thermometer. This thermometer comes out and it gets inserted and you can take your temperatures, whether it's broth or something like this, or going into um, a piece of meat that you've cooked. So it's very important to follow what the guide is from the USDA. And you want to make sure that with ground beef, this product will reach 160 when we're done, Bruce. Great, great. Okay, so I'll leave that there. but. What is our secret ingredient? Well, you were telling me, which is probably everyone's favorite ingredient. Right. We'll do some cheese. Right, so we're gonna <laughs> add a little bit of cheese. Parmesan cheese is a hard cheese and it has quite a lot of flavor. Um, it does have some sodium, so we aren't adding any extra sodium to this product, but um, this is what brings out the flavor of this finished dish. And just slowly just sprinkle it over all. And about how much are we using? 
whole thing. That's the whole a, thing. That's one oh, cup. I do love the that's cheese. One cup. Yep. And so as the noodles soften a little bit more, this is all going to blend in, and that's how you get this really wonderful, rich flavor in one pan. Right. Now, should we stir all the cheese in, or is it you just going to stay? Yeah, you can stir the cheese in. You can let it sit. Um, again, as long as those um, noodles are kind of al dente and, and what it, your family prefers, right. it should be ready to go. So cool. since you have it at the right temperature, Bruce. So. Yeah, I, I think I prefer when I do stuff like that. I like stirring everything in because it gives mm -hmm. it the even cheese all right, throughout instead right. of just one big bite of it. And, and then when you're serving someone, you might want to add, you know, something beautiful, a sprig of parsley or some basil, something fresh there if you're going to put that onto the plate. Yeah, it's so. funny. The, the, the more I cook and, and the older I'm getting, the more I really appreciate color when I'm doing mm -hmm. food. It's, it's pride in your cooking and your preparation, right. too. And it actually does help people um, in the visual so that their taste buds, they have a little bit of salivary gland action, and they really want to eat. So that helps if you have somebody that isn't really That's eating right. too well for you or has a lower appetite. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. All right. So Domesticated. Can, that's it. So I, I now know how to make spaghetti. So I, I've learned, now I'm up to like five meals I can make for my family at home. That's awesome. I'm doing good. What are the meals? <laughs> salad? No, I don't make salad. I do, yeah, I do like steak, sausage. I do all those like typical like, you're a man. You must make these meals. Yeah. Like, yeah whatever. <laughs> So I do want to touch on a couple of things before we move on. Okay. Uh, we had some questions about the library program mm -hmm. that we, that sorry, we, we went to another video, but we did have a question from Mary on uh, Zoom. She wanted to know if, if you can get the kit and give it to someone who lives in Kent County. And as long as you pick up the kit from Queens County, they, they are okay with you spreading the love however you can. Oh, but okay. just make sure the kit is picked up and dropped off at Queen Anne's County Library. Okay, good. So if you want to give it to someone out of the county, that's cool. Wow. So, yeah, we asked Andrea after we had left. Yeah. And then we had someone else say they love roasted, roasted uh, Brussels sprouts. So, oh. <laughs> of course. That's great. So the next question I want to pose to you guys. Okay. If you're making spaghetti, what sauce do you use? I like Paul Newman's saccharini sauce. Man, you were ready. <laughs> you must have. Like, like, <laughs> I just hit me, but it's got peppers in it, mushrooms, and all kinds of it. It's really good. Awesome, awesome. Renee? Is either homemade or I cheat ragu. <laughs> I have to say, I That's cheat. Fine. There ain't nothing wrong with ragu. Okay. There ain't nothing wrong with <laughs> <That's> ragu. <right. laughs> what All do right. you use, Bruce? Oh, what do I, oh, thank you, Renee. Um, we use we try something different every time we go. We uh -huh. really do. That's good. It, I mean, but usually a garden combo finds its way in a very often. Uh huh. So, but anyway, we're not <laughs> exciting at all. But someone else is exciting. We have Josh Bigelow, right, Renee? That's right. We sure do. So Josh Bigelow is the clinic director at Tidewater Physical Therapy. And Josh is going to show us how to lift safely. That's so important. So we'll take it over to Josh. So I'll just go over a quick kind of tutorial, kind of how you would help transfer a patient or transfer a family member out of a chair. Um, the big thing about you know, learning how to do those things is just making sure that you have good leverage and good stability yourself so you don't pull your significant other or family member on top of you. So, Steve, can I borrow you for a second? Sure. A seat right here. So the simple method that I typically try to use is what's called a lock elbow method. So very simply, you want to make sure you get your you know, family member or thing to the front of the chair. Um, that's where the frame of the chair typically is, so it makes it a little bit better for leverage so you can kind of get up, but also get your legs a little bit more and kind of centered over your body so you can push better. So the typical method is you want to be on your family member's strong side. If they've suffered a stroke or any kind of damage to any kind of their hip, knee, ankle, anything like that, they're not going to want to be on the, you don't want to be on that that weak side typically unless you have to feel like for stability. So if they feel like they're going to fall, you want to be on the weak side. If you want to be on there for your better leverage, if they've had a stroke, you want to be on the strong side for their arm that they can use better. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to have Steve kind of grab my elbow with his hand and I'm going to grab his elbow. And if you notice, I have a staggered stance. So one foot's out here, one for this is so that if I stood in front of him and I tried to pull, I'd fall over backwards, potentially if he got a little bit too much momentum. But the real simple way is if you open your stance and kind of create this, you're very strong. You can move side to side. And you don't feel like you're going to fall over or fall backwards. So the very simple way is he can pull on my elbow as much as I want to, or as much as he wants to, and I can pull on his elbow. I'm going to kind of just guide his back a little bit. And then when we're ready to go up, we're going to do a count of three. 
one, two, three, pull up and stand up. And then if you have a walker device, you have it in close hand so that you can help them kind of get back there and then they can take off and go about their day. So real simple stuff, but that makes it the easiest way so that you have good control. If they were to lose their balance or anything, you can pull them to you really quickly. If they were to not be able to get up, you can set them right back down in the chair and you don't feel like you're falling on top of them if you're in front of them. So it gives you great stability and good function with them. So that would be the easiest method for transfers. So if there's any other questions or anything like that. And I guess kind of going back in, you want to make sure you get as close to the chair as possible with the walker. And yes, so if you're doing the reverse thing, you want to make sure you get close to the big thing about sitting back down is making sure that you kind of make sure you're centered over the chair. If you have armrests, reach back with the armrest and then try to control descent. Don't win the medical world. We don't want to see flops. So I did that wrong. <laughs> okay. It happens. Gravity is a lot easier. Yeah, on us. You had one job. Right. <laughs> and then sit down. And then okay. sit down, exactly. Right. Yep. The softer the surface, the harder it is to get up from. That's one thing to take note if you're trying to transfer a family member off of a couch or off of a recliner. They can be very challenging because they really kind of compress downward. It doesn't allow you to kind of come up as easy. So you want to make sure you really get them very far forward on that chair, almost to the point where they feel like they're going to fall off. And then by having that leverage on there, they can actually get their center of gravity over their legs so they can push up much more effectively. But softer surfaces take your time. It's, it can be a little challenging, especially with those nice cushy plush couches. Are there any type of leg exercises that you can do maybe when you're sitting down to just help strengthen your legs? And I mean, simple mobility? leg exercises in which you kind of work on, you know, kind of maintaining simple range of motion through your knees. Sometimes this is a good thing to do before you get up out of a chair anyway, because if you've been sitting for a period of time, you know, there's static blood flow in the legs. It doesn't really move too well. So just simple leg exercises there. Actually practicing the transfer, kind of the lift off technique. So kind of having your hands on the armrest and trying to initiate, trying to do that. Um, if it's difficult, you can actually take pillows and have underneath there, elevate the surface so you can start working on just trying to get up and work on that motion. And then as it gets easier, you can drop a pillow out. That's a good way to kind of work on transfer slash kind of squatting techniques. Great, thank you so much. All righty. We did have a request if you could, uh, Josh, could you demonstrate uh, helping someone get up off the floor? So the floor transfers are always a tricky one. Um, you kind of have to take into account, you know, if it suffered from a fall, um, if it suffered from a, you know, most of the time it's going to be a fall. Sometimes you have difficulty just because it's, you know, you get down there and you can't get back up. So the big method that I teach patients to try to do is if you get down on the floor. You want me to get down? No, that's okay. okay. Right. So if you get down on the floor, you know, most things, if you've fallen, the first thing I teach patients to do is do a self-awareness check. Say, okay, do I feel any pain anywhere? Do I know where I am? Kind of do kind of a, you know, self, you know, kind of check to say, okay, do I feel okay? Is anything hurt? And if you don't feel anything hurt and you feel like you can go ahead and move from here, then you go ahead and start getting into what's called the side sit position. So you kind of go from down on the ground. If you're on your back, get to the sideline, come up onto the side sit position, kind of take a little mini break. This is pretty traumatic when you fall. So the big thing is to take your time. Everybody's in a rush to get off the ground. So once we get here, then you can get into the all fours position by simply just doing a simple push and right over to the all fours. And then from there, you're looking at mainly trying to get to a piece of furniture because in order to get to do like a simple lunge and push up, that takes a lot of effort um, depending on if you're older, if you have any kind of arthritic conditions, this can be very challenging. So the main thing is to try to find a piece of furniture that you can get to relatively easily. And then when you get from there, you can do a couple things. One, try to get into one knee up, one knee back, depending on which was your better leg. You can use your hand on your knee and try to do a little bit of a push and scoot. That's the easiest method to do. Some patients find, or some people find that that's too hard. They just can't get that initial motion. So the second method is they kind of come to the chair and they just start to try to walk themselves up that way. If you have a family member that's gone on the ground and even that's too tough and you're close by and you call for help, we like to teach patients to use a little bit of a staging or a, a uh, kind of bridge the gap a little bit. So if you get a small step stool, they can scoot to the step stool 
then they can scooch up to there and kind of break it into stages and take little mini rest periods at each time. So that makes life a little bit easier, makes it so it's not too challenging and makes it so you can take your time. But the big thing I always tell patients is make sure at each stage, take a breath. Let your body slow down, let the body kind of you know, reset because it can be kind of scary when you first fall. But was, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry. That was a great question. And I think that takes us back to Andrew and the importance of, you know, seeing that visual there just made me think of his presentation about how important it is to have a life alert button. You know, right there, maybe you couldn't get up. You don't have a family member. Your cell phone's across the room. So if you have that button, you know, you have the ability to reach out for help. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you think your family member has it, you know, it's so easy to get a hold of those things because they can put them right into your phone system. You don't even have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. We did have a couple other questions, but you seem to have answered them all. All right. <laughs> Very good. That's great. That's great. Andrew, thank you. you it was truly, truly helpful. Um, the transfer from the floor up was, was really important mm -hmm. um, because we have so many calls. You know, they'll call the paramedics when you're living out at home alone, of course. But you might be able to uh, get a family member to help, you know, move you safely uh, if they know how to do it right. Mm -hmm. And so we really appreciate that. You're very welcome. Yeah. So, Josh, before you go, favorite spaghetti sauce? <laughs> See, I kind of like the, uh, I think, what's it called? The vodka sauce? Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, there you go. It's got a, it's a good like, little bite to it and everything, but it has a little bit more, but... I don't eat much pasta these days. Yeah. Don't get ready to exercise as much as I used to, so the carbs are not really the greatest thing for me right now. There you go. Yeah. We well, a new vote for vodka sauce. That's right. Oh, That's right. Goodness. That's right. Great. Well, we, we thank Josh Bigelow from Time Water Physical Therapy. That was amazing. So what do we got next coming up, Renee? Well, we have Mr. Ken Haas and Mary Ellen Sheffield, who are from our IT department here at Queen Anne's County. They are wonderful. They're going to teach us about being safe with social media because, you know, we get the pop-ups. Um, we have to be careful about uh, some of the emails that you receive. So they're going to step in and teach us about that and uh, hopefully save us from being hacked on our computer or cell phones. And, okay. and these guys had some fun. They do. They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll, we'll get some information from them in just a moment. Hi, my name is Ken, Ken, and I'm an uh, IT professional. As you can see, I got a badge here. Well, the, yeah, I just got back from the beach, so don't, don't really worry about that. But I also got that professional looking shirt here, and you, don't worry about that either. So, um, but yeah, I'm the guy that lives down the street. Um, you may see me in the supermarket. I'm the nice guy. I'm the guy that wants to help you all the time. You know, some of you may know me as a Juan de Pool Boy, if you know what I mean. Um, all I want to do is just help you. I just want to come in. Maybe I can even talk my way into your house or talk to you on the phone. Just never know where you might meet me. All I got to do is just get a few little words in. And then just get on your computer. And then who knows what's going to happen. It, hold on. Wait a second. It, I got to take this. This is one of my customers. So, yo, hello. Hi, I'm returning a call about my credit card being stolen. I'd be glad to help you. Um, first, let me, let me get some of your credit card information. Okay, I got it right here. Okay, sure. Those numbers are? So, Ken, did you have fun making that with us? Yes. <laughs> that was a great time. It was, you, you both came in. You had some fun. I know I say both because we have someone joining you in the next video that they'll see soon. But it was, it was great to get a, um, a very serious message across with a little bit of fun. That's true. So, Renee, yeah. introduce us All to right. Ken. So, we've got Ken Haas. He's the operations support. Uh, for Queen Anne's County uh, Department of uh, Information Technology, and Ken is the man. I'm telling you, that whole department is wonderful, guys. We we go down, we have issues, um, we have a lot of users in the county, 
And uh, if it wasn't for them, we would not be able to effectively serve you. So we, we're very proud of them. Ken, what do you have to teach us today? Um, I just basically wanted to go over a couple things that, uh, that you as a user have control over. There's, there's some things with data that you don't have control over. Uh, one thing is passwords. A lot of people are trying to have remember passwords. A big thing today, it, make it easier, is use a passphrase. Um, what I mean is like you could say, um, Ken is my dog. And with that, it just seems like a simple phrase, but if you take the letter E and use a three, or you take an A and use an at symbol, or if you take an I and use an exclamation point, or take the letter O and use a zero, you can change the complexity of just a simple phrase to very complicated. Um, and that helps a lot with uh, creating a password. Uh, and don't forget to change passwords every couple of months, because that also um, creates something very harder for somebody to break into. Also, um, don't forget on your phones and when you receive emails, texts, and stuff like that, if you don't know who it is, um, don't respond to it. Uh, sometimes it's called a phishing scheme. Somebody sends you a text. It'll just say, hi, this is so-and-so. Did you get this? It's a text on your phone. You have no idea who it is. Uh, don't respond to it. Don't even say, this, I'm, I'm not this person. Because if you respond, that's a response they know, okay, there's somebody at the other end of this text, and so we, we've got a hit on this. Or you get an email from somebody. It's the same thing, okay? We know somebody's live on the, the other end of this email. So those are the kinds of things that you want to avoid, too. Um, also, with email addresses, try to keep your email addresses for business and personal uh, separated. So if you have banking accounts and dealing with banks and paying bills, you may want to consider having two different email addresses, one for, um, one for the, your banking things and paying bills and stuff like that, and then one for your personal stuff, uh, just so if the two happen to get uh, sacri uh, broken into or however you want to say, um, you don't have to worry about everything that you have. Uh, keep in track of your passwords. It's not the greatest practice to keep them written down, but if you're in your house, you can just have a little notebook and write them down so you don't forget where they are also, too. Um, anything else, Renee, on that? Just a couple things? I think it's great. And one thing that you pointed out um, in our training, and by the way, um, the county employees are trained constantly uh, from our IT department. We're giving quizzes. Um, we, have to, we have a time limit. We must uh, take our training, and it is extremely helpful. Um, Ken, one of the things is to look at uh, the top there for the HTTP address. Make sure that you check for those things that it's just not a bad email that may have come through or a website. Right, yeah. Uh, usually, which HTTPS means, it's a say, secure site, which means the site has a certificate and it is a registered site. If you come across a site that says uh, it'll have like a red X next to it, uh, or is just HTTP, it generally means that they don't have a certificate, they're not up to date. Um, a lot of browsers, which is the thing that you look at web pages in, um, they actually don't play well with that anymore because they're forcing everyone to move to being certified. So when you look at a web page, you can actually know you're looking at a web page that is certified. Um, a, a good example is, is we had something come into the county a couple weeks ago. Um, it was a email that came in about PayPal. Uh, several people in the county had got a blanket email. Uh, we caught it very quickly and blocked them off. Um, but it said, uh, it said something about PayPal. But if you looked at the email address within it that is usually hidden, it said, P A Y P A dot com. It didn't say PayPal. So that's just one of those things. It, it looked very similar. And if you would have looked at it and just said, oh, this, this looks, it, would, it was going to lead you to the wrong place. And a lot of times they basically copy the whole page, just change a few things on it. And before you know it, you're into something where they may have you compromise 
your identity itself. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and those websites are everywhere. And like even when they use ads to put those at the top of Google searches too. So you, yes. can, you can easily find yourself falling into a trap if you're not careful about watching the websites that you visit. Yes, and, and on that, with that note too, if uh, emails that you're getting in from friends and stuff like that, um, if you're going to forward an email, say something, uh, even if it's a joke or something very interesting, before you forward that, just make sure that you uh, actually go into the email itself and try to remove all the information from the other people that has been sent from. Because if not, you don't know how many times you may send it to a friend, they send it to a friend, and before you know it, it's way down the chain, and people have all these email addresses from people that they don't know. But if it gets in the wrong hands, they already have a full pool of email addresses to say, these people exist. I got somebody to shoot from the hip on. So, And with that, too, with um, phone calls. Very easy phishing attempt, people trying to get information. If you don't know the phone call uh, coming into your cell phone, uh, you just look at it, it'll say, some of them will say blocked. Those are usually ones that you just don't want to answer to begin with. And if you don't know it and uh, you're hesitant about it, just let the phone pick it up and then call them back or listen to the voicemail. If it's important enough, they always will leave a voicemail. So. I know a really big one right now because we're talking about social media because my parents actually went through this. But it's uh, people messaging you through Facebook. Mm-hmm. And we have people watching on Facebook now, so I know we have people using it. But if you haven't talked to your cousin Greg in seven months and all of a sudden you get a link for a video from cousin Greg, don't open that link. Right. Like, or at least reach out to Greg and be like, hey, did you mean to send me this? Because people are attacking through uh, Facebook messaging too. And people just think it's their friends sending them a funny video. It's not... So please be careful with that also. Right. And with Facebook and social media, um, be careful about posting uh, real-time stuff, um, especially if you're on vacation. Mm. Uh, You're just inviting people to let know that, hey, I'm not at my house. Um, You may say, well, I don't have these people. You know, I've I've only got a close net of friends and stuff like that. People that are really good that can exploit the Internet really well um, they could be friends of friends of friends. One, somebody that you know could share something off there, and it creates a small hole in the security that Facebook or any other social media has. Um, so you always got to be aware. Again, these are things you can control yourself. Um, so you just want to make sure that it's something you can control. You want to look at all the safeguards you can. You don't want to. You don't, don't want to live your life paranoid. But it's just these steps that you want to go through. Now, most of the time, end users are low-lying fruit, so you'll go for them. So if you make yourself a little bit harder, they're not going to go for you. So they'll just skip by you. It's like, why even put put that out there for yourself? Ken, that was great. Yeah. And we now know Ken's password. He told us earlier in the uh, the segment. So (laughs) we'll be able to get in all of his laptops now. Thank you so much, Ken. Yeah, I think we're going to actually let Ken go by showing another fun video that him and uh, Mary Ellen did. That'd be great. Yeah, so let's go over to that video, and then we'll get to our next segment. All right. Is that you? Yes. What are you doing? I just want to look at a few emails. Don't you look at emails all day long? I do, but these are personal emails. What time's dinner going to be? I don't know. It's going to be in a few minutes. A few minutes. And, you know, that antivirus came up. Did you take care of that? Antivirus. It ain't worth a crap. I'll I'll do it later. I'll I'll just do it later. I... I really think these companies write their own viruses so we have to pay for this all the time and it doesn't do anything. (sighs) Hey, I love it. Your brother sent me another email. Don't open his junk. What? He he sends great emails. He always sends good stuff. He sends funny jokes and stuff. Oh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Um... Dinner's ready. Where are you? Uh, I'll be there in a minute. Um, 
Uh, just give me a few minutes, will you, please? What's going on? Um, nothing. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. What are you doing? Yeah, um, nothing! Look at all the pop-ups! So! I told you not to open his emails. Fix the antivirus. <laughs> they did so, they did so good. I, I know you guys haven't had a chance to see the final product because we're actually in here as, as the final product is being shown, but I can't wait to show them to you. They, they had a hoot. They were fun. And we had a good time making those. That's fun. That's fun. And our next segment is a lot of fun, too. It is. So, Renee, what do we got going on? Well, I'll tell you what. We have Ann Martin, and she's from our Graysonville Senior Center. So we have three senior centers, and unfortunately they're closed because of the pandemic, but the managers and staff are still working for you. They're, you still call them. They're contacting everyone, and we're so grateful for them. So Anne is going to do a fun project, and some of you might have received your rocks in the mail with your markers. And as you know, the theme to our conference today is Sure Safe Seniors. So Anne came with a great idea of doing a B for Be Safe. So Anne is going to teach us how to make a B with our rock and markers. And listen, you can take these and make a lot of different things. It's such a fun, easy um, project to do. And Anne will also tell you about some other fun things you can do with your rock once it's done, because she's a member of something else. So I'm going to let Anne take us away, and we're going to make our B for B sick. So um, we do a little bit of rock painting at the Graysonville Senior Center, which is why Renee invited me here to share this with you. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy painting rocks. It's very relaxing. It's a good way, way to de-stress. And because the theme today is be safe, um, Steve and Renee have asked that we paint a little bumblebee. And um, we're gonna, they were given, each of you were given rocks with some markers, I believe. Um, whenever you paint rocks, the first thing you wanna do is buy rocks. <laughs> <laughs> do not steal your neighbor's rocks. Um, you can go online and people that love to paint rocks actually do spend money and buy rocks. You can get them at the Landscape Supply Company or their Home Depot. Um, you can find them in your own yard, and some people even make their own. You don't want to swipe any from the Red, the Red Lobster Restaurant or the Olive Garden. They've got lovely rocks. You were very specific with that. Like, you, <laughs> you, noticed, noticed, you took one from Red Lobster one point. You notice rocks everywhere we go. Uh, but most importantly, when, when you're painting rocks, is you want a smooth surface. So these rocks are very smooth that you've been given. Um, you need to prep your rock, which would mostly um, wash it with some warm water, maybe a nail brush, um, and allow it to dry before you paint on it, of course. Then you would want to paint your rock. So um, before you paint rocks, you need to gather the supplies. Today, we've been given some Sharpies. Um, a lot of people use acrylic paint. It is called rock painting, so they use paint with a paintbrush. Um, we can really cheat and do very fine details with Sharpies, though, so we love them. Um, acrylic paints come in a bottle. Some people use spray paint that comes in a can and paint pens. There's actually a brand that rock painters love that's uh, acrylic paint in a pen. Um, some people use glitter. So you might want to base coat your rock before you start, and others do not, so your rock today is not coated. So um, we're going to do a uh, little bumblebee, and we're going to do the words be safe. And if your bumblebee's still alive, you'll see little dots, a little dotted line where he's flying. <laughs> okay, so we'll leave him here. And um, I think maybe we'll start with the yellow, okay? Renee, you're going to paint you. Are you going to do like a queen bee? Yeah, I am. That's, <laughs> I'm going to try to follow, follow her. <laughs> she is the queen bee, I'm sure. So I'm going to paint this little bee's face yellow with my yellow marker. And I see some of his body is yellow. Um, this is something that, uh, please join in, get your bee done. I see you were very hesitant, Steve. Did, did you not know how to commit to the body right away? Uh, I was a little bit worried. <laughs> what happened to your bee? <laughs> 
Well, I've seen him trace before, so I can't trace a good one freehand. So we'll Do you see need how it tra- goes. You need to trace one? No, I'm good. I'll, I'll try. Okay. Um, we are going to have a you know a vote at the end. We're going to put all three next to each other and see who does the best. Okay, so I do like the idea of starting with your lighter color first when you can. So that's why we chose yellow. Um, the little wings would be silver or white, so we were given a little silver sharpie to paint those wings. A little bit of metallic there. Um, if you're Yellow is dry. You want to also dot his little eyeballs. Um, if we were using white, I think they'd really show up, but um, he's got little metallic silver eyes. We're going to take our black marker, and he's got little antennas on his head. Um, we're going to outline his... Actually, I'm going to go down to the letters and just outline the letters that are written on the rock. Sorry, Steve, you have to uh, write your own letters, huh? Yeah. <laughs> B-E-E, I think I got it. B-E-E, you got it. So um, the reason I didn't do the body was I want to make sure that the silver and the yellow paint is dry before we go uh, writing all over that with another paint marker. So I've drawn a line for the little B line, but I'm only going to put dots along it instead of filling it in solid. So this bee is very happy and full of love because he's flying in a heart-shaped pattern. Some are just looping. Okay, so I'm going to outline the bee's body. So while you're outlining, if I may ask, what, what's life like for you right now with COVID? Do you miss all the seniors coming in? And I definitely miss our seniors yeah. coming in. Yeah. Um, and we do, we call around, There's, uh, we do try to touch base with them, but it's just not the same as seeing them in person. Right. Yeah, I know that our rock painting friends have met, and um, when we meet at the center, they would, you know, stay for a couple hours and socialize. Sure. And really chit-chat and laugh and have fun and just relax, and they don't get to do this now. They're stuck. They're locked down. Right. Okay, so his eyes aren't jumping too much for me. I'm going to put a little black dot in each of those. Um, color in the rest of his body stripes black. So he's a yellow and black bee. Renee, I can't wait to see what you got going on over there. I see you switching markers every three seconds in your hand. Are you getting him, Renee? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, the other thing is the back of the rock. When we paint rocks for fun, um, we put a little, um, it would get sealed. These rocks are not sealed. We just did them. Um, the sealer that we would use is a spray sealer. Some people use one that brushes on. Some rocks, if they're painted with Sharpies or per other permanent markers but not uh, acrylic paint, you would want to mod podge. A coat of that on top of it and then seal it with the spray sealer would be my suggestion um, and that allows it to be more protective if it's sitting out in the weather and the rain and the wind and the sun um, the reason we paint rocks is uh, we call them kindness rocks and the idea is you would paint on the back of them um, instructions so we would be asking folks to paint a rock for fun, but then you want to make somebody's day, so you hide it somewhere around the grocery store, parking lot, um, a restaurant, the gas station on the pump, anywhere red you lobster. go. Just the red, red lobster, lobster. <laughs> Yeah. So um, anyway, you would hide it around town for others to find. So they're very surprised and tickled when they find a cute little rock. Um, when they pick it up, they might turn it over, and it set its instructions on the back that you would write. Um, normally, we write, uh, because I belong to a group called Ken Island Rocks, post a pic to Facebook at K.I. Rocks. It's not a lot of room there, so you need to <laughs> condense a little bit. Um, and hide it, or re-hide re it, or keep it, and that's 
how we do rocks. How far have some of your rocks been found or moved, you know? They've been everywhere, yeah. It's crazy that they do show up in Alaska and oh, California really? wow. and From one Ken was Island. in Spain. It was really That's amazing. So the deal with the Ken Island Rocks rock page, um, you um, it's on Facebook. So when I paint this rock, when I hide this rock, I might be at Royal Farms and I'm going to take a picture of it with a little Royal Farms gas pump in the background and leave a post to Ken Island Rock saying, I'm leaving this, this little bee's happy here where, he, where you get gas. So it's kind of a hint and there are some people that will follow you around and they'll go where you mail a letter and look for your rock that you posted online that you left there. And um, anyway, you post it on Facebook that you've left it and then when someone finds it, your instructions are asking them post a picture and put it on the Facebook page that you just found this rock and where. You might also leave a hint of where you would rehide it. If you didn't plan to keep it, you might say, I just found this at Walgreens and I'm going to go mail a letter next. So again, you're giving a hint again for somebody that might want to go chase it down. Yeah, and some of the artwork that so, you guys, I'm sorry, some of the artwork that you guys do at the senior center with the rock painting, I'd be kind of selfish if I found one because they're so cool. I'd, want to keep it instead of rehiding it. Definitely. The more they paint, the better they get. Everybody thinks they're no good, but it's we, just something that they get better and better at. It's really We had a QAC TV rock that, uh, that you're supposed to contact us if you ever found it. And we haven't been contacted in, in a couple of years since we've done it. We, we had some people comment on it and some people contact us, but I think someone just threw it in the ocean now. It's gone. <laughs> They're like, oh, we're, we're done with it. It's probably on somebody's desk. That's right, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, <laughs> you're right, you're right. They're tuned in right now, too, because of that rock. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I painted it, so I know it's not on anyone's desk. <laughs> so did you paint it? it? You painted it? Yeah, I did. Wow. I put it out, and people found it. And when someone found it, we went and did a video with them oh, talking cool. about how they found it. It was really neat. So we have some, some finished products? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I can't wait. All right, uh, let's do let's do Renee first. I want to see Queen Bee. Come here. It's about as good as it gets. Oh, hopefully, we see. I know. I know. It's a, it's a small rock on a, on a it's wide a small shot. Rock. <laughs> That's your Queen Bee. All right. Next up, here's Steve's. Again, I know. I know it's kind of far away. I know it's a small rock. All right, guys. We finished. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a lot of fun and we certainly hope everyone had a good time and we hope you learned something today. We wanna to thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, we will have future segments, so please keep your eye out for us. Um, those of us at the Queen Anne's County Area Agency on Aging, Queen Anne's County Community Services, we all want to thank you guys for taking this time to join us today. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve. Steve Scott's my boss, so I need to let him wrap us up. Have a good day, and thank you for joining us. Well, thanks so much, Renee, and those were great words. This was a lot of fun for us, so we hope you had fun as well at home. And we just want to mention again that, you know, we are here. We're open at the main office of the Kramer Center, so please call us. I know we heard a lot about IT. And, but we still want you to be comfortable with, with opportunities to use computers, to use Zoom and those kind of things. And so reach out to us and we can even assist with that. And we're gonna be working really hard at the entire department and the senior centers as well to offer virtual programs and anything that we can do through this time to make sure that we are there and available to you. So please reach out and again, thank you for attending and look for us a little bit later. We're trying to do a couple more of these things, maybe not quite as long, but. Uh, we thank QAC TV for their, their assistance as well. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, guys. It was fun. So thanks for watching. Please share, like, subscribe, follow our page, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Sailors.